perfect, 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 perfect. I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. 2019 could possibly be the best year of Zelda speedrunning. Insanely optimized records being set, formerly elite runners making their comeback, and fantastic showcases at GDQ, this year above any other has been the time to get into runs. Just last month, what was historically the slowest 3D Zelda any percent run has been cut down by 55%. With that, you could already guess that there was an inundation of new and old runners coming back and reviving a formerly dead speedrun. While Skyward Sword has flourished, one other game has sat in the shadows waiting for its time. From a competitive aspect, Wind Waker speedrunning died in 2016 after Chaotic Ace achieved a 355.44 in any percent. While it did have a resurgence in 2018 when Demon beat the world record, incorporating manual super swimming to attain a 348.17, the difficulty of the new realm and the rise in popularity of the Wii U remake had essentially killed the original game. The fastest route for HD was easier, and the run was less than a third of the length. The current HD world record is finished before Demon's 348 even gets the grappling hook. It wasn't always like this though. HD used to be far slower due to dry storage being patched. This changed when item sliding was found, but the original was seemingly dead for good when this happened. What? Guys, I did it! 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 I did burn escape! Woohoohoo! Get it! <laughs> Barrierskip is the holy grail of modern 3D Zelda glitches, and there are many other video essays describing the history of this skip's discovery in HD and how impactful it was. The TLDR is, HD was lucky enough to have a method to gain and maintain a higher than normal speed at will. Its GameCube counterpart didn't have that luxury. Another way needed to be found. Dragon Bane descended from the clouds and gave us this. But how did it happen? In 2016, a bug called Actor Deloading was found that allowed players to despawn Songstones in Wind Temple. It wasn't well understood at the time. However, users managed to deload the Tower of Gods along with some mini bosses. Using cheats, at the time it was discovered to be theoretically possible to unload the barrier. Fast forward to 2019, and understanding of this trick has substantially increased. The game has, for our purposes, three spaces for actor data. DYN can be used dynamically by actors depending on need. It mostly stores a reference for each actor spawn, such as position coordinates. ACT, which exclusively stores ARC file data, which are archive files Nintendo uses, are essentially zip files and can store anything, commonly used for objects and room data. Finally, GameHeap is used to store all the information a specific actor needs to function and can be wildly different depending on actor complexity. If you imagine memory as a snake, the game can allocate memory space either from the head or the tail. Due to a memory leak, if you fill up memory with enough junk actors, the game won't load an actor that its arc file dictates needs more memory to load than the game has available. Memory space can be filled up with a few methods, usually game heap will run out first. This causes a state known as invisible items. You can get this state with arrow duping. This is frame perfect. Doing this enough will fill up the game heap. Now any method to fill up memory will go to DYN. For simplicity, you'll want to use your invisible grapple hook repeatedly. Every time you use the grapple hook, the game commits a predetermined amount of memory to DYN space. After the item has been pulled, the memory is supposed to come back because of a memory leak exclusive to Wind Waker. When items are invisible, that doesn't happen, so the memory is never restored. So this is a little future update here in the middle of the video. So Demon recently discovered a method of filling up the memory that is a bit faster than pulling out the grapple hook. So if you get the game's memory low enough that a bomb flower can't load, uh, if you try to pick up a bomb flower, it'll actually fill up the memory. 
and you could do that faster than using the grapple hook. So things are going to be updated every day. This wasn't the first thing I had to update, but hopefully it'll be the last. Using this method, runners will be able to deload a whole bunch of stuff, but namely, the barrier. This is tricky because the barrier is relatively small, only 1.82 kilobytes. Because of this, it's difficult to specifically fail to load the barrier while avoiding a crash. A lot more work needed to be done before anybody could do this on console, let alone a run. Gymnast published the first setup for this skip that is confirmed to work on console. Gymnast setup seems to work but has several issues making it painfully slow and will sometimes take 3000 IQ reads to improvise if something goes wrong. Gymnast finished a run in 3 hours, 29 minutes, and 10 seconds. Wait, 329.10? That's only like 14 minutes faster than Demon's time. You skip half the game. The biggest culprits have to do with this setup and the understanding of barrier skip. It takes Jim 43 minutes, 2 crashes, and a softlock to finally get the accurate duping needed for Forsaken Fortress 2. Then it takes him nearly another hour once in Hyrule Castle to despawn the barrier. Behind the scenes, the Wind Waker community had been working diligently to find a more permanent solution for barrier skip. One that wasn't just more consistent, but faster to boot. In the old route, the runner used a bow in order to achieve invisible items. For obvious reasons, that was pretty slow. Skipping the bow, and also skipping bombs, would be the goal, and its solution was the Deku Tree. When you first enter Forest Haven, the Deku Tree has been infected with a bad case of Chew Jelly Eczema. <laughs> Conveniently, after bonking to force the Chews off of him, the memory available dips low enough to get the invisible grapple hook for a short amount of time. This can be repeated by using dry storage to store the cutscene of the Chews returning to his face. When this happens, the player can repeatedly bonk to gain access access to invis items and fill up their memory without the use of the bow. Unfortunately, this still isn't totally consistent and has its problems. Not only is unloading the barrier still iffy, you also have to skip bombs in this route, requiring a difficult hover and frame-perfect arrow shot onto a morph mid-air while dead in order to continue to the final fight. <sighs> this is clearly tough, and there's no real answer for this yet. Jim's run is an amazing achievement and extremely important to the future of Wind Waker speedrunning. Demon's run proved there to be a viable path for the Wind Waker to be under two hours, which has been accomplished by Ian Miles and is expected to keep improving into the one hour, 20 minute range. The thing about speedrun science is everything's always changing. Hell, I had to rewrite the script eight times before this video was finished. Developments will be found in time. It just takes dedicated speedrunners to keep practicing and speed scientists to keep learning more. And it may look grim now, but I'm confident that we'll have something somewhat consistent soon.